presidential election is getting dicey. Iran's presidential election is getting dicey. Holy shit. So you got this guy, Jafar. I'm just going to call him Jafar from here on out. If you look at his face, you can see exactly why I would call him Jafar. He looks like a fucking Jafar. He looks like a notorious. He looks like the villain. He looks like the villain in the presidential elections. You got seven guys. And the villain is Jafar, this Mosin Rezi guy, Rezai, Rezi, whatever. So this Mosin Rezi, apparently he was a big military leader of the Revolutionary Guards in the 80s and 90s. And he's also going to have uh, suggest that Iran kidnaps American soldiers in order to raise some ransom money. So that's who Jafar is, right? Now, at a presidential debate recently, Jafar Mohsen Razi had threatened to put another man, Himmati, Himmati. And so there's, you know, we're told that there's five hardliners and two moderates. Notice nobody says there's no liberals, there's no socialists, no liberals in Iran. So they threatened to put Hamadi on trial, the former governor of the Central Bank, for treason. That's what Jafar is going to do. Jafar is coming after Hamadi and saying that he's going to put him on trial for treason and then ban him and the other members of the government from leaving the country. So I'm not for sure what Jafar is actually saying if he's saying that Hamadi, in the specific way that he ran the Central Bank, he you know should be on trial for treason, or if he's just trying to get to the bottom of things, just you know. Just putting everybody in jail, right? Just put everybody on trial, get to the bottom of things. That's very competitive. And then also, it's reminiscent of when Trump was doing, uh, Donald Trump was doing that whole lock her up thing, that whole lock her up thing against Hillary Clinton. So, you know, this actually, though, feels more serious and not just as a political gimmick. So you got Jafar. Jafar is sitting there saying that Himadi needs to be put on trial for treason, ban him and the other government. So that's, uh, you know, that's a good rhetoric. But Jafar, I don't think so. I'm not going to fucking, if Jafar hates Himadi, then I think I like Himadi. But Himadi, I don't know. I, I don't, his face, he just seems like he's got a kind face, but he just has an asshole expression, you know, on his face. It's just, I don't know if I like it or not. I don't know if I like your face, Himati. There's two guys that were saying, you know, is the fucking moderate, whatever. There's a Turkish, an ethnic Turk. Is that Iranian? Is that a Persian? Can you be a Turk and a Persian and an Iranian? What kind of person is an Iranian? I don't know. I think it, I like the idea of a Turk, an ethnic Turk being at the head of Iran. It makes it seem like they're more progressive or something. I don't know. So Jafar, right, he was the former leader of the Revolutionary Guards. Jafar is currently the secretary of the Expedience Council. He claimed that the Iranian currency was so devalued much, he was, uh, this is the charge for Hamadi, that the train of the revolution has turned into a scooter. So Jafar, he's talking about, you know, the revolution and this and that. Hamadi, which, you know, 1979 revolution, so Hamadi, did he devalue Iranian currency? Is it Hamadi's fault? I mean, if you have no social safety net and if you're not doing Milton Friedman economics, you know, we're saying that these are conservatives, but in what fucking sense are the conservatives? Just in terms of the theocracy or in terms of, you know, economics? Conservative at what? What the fuck are you, you know, this is who the Republicans are, right? This is who the Republican Party would be in Iran. But in Iran, it's all a bunch of Republicans. Well, actually, guess that's... That's just like America, so never mind about all of that. So, yeah, Jafar, Jafar's sitting there criticizing Hamadi. Jafar's going to put Hamadi on trial for treason. He's going to make sure Hamadi can't fucking leave the country, and nobody's going to leave the country because Jafar is going to put them all on trial. I don't know, um, uh, Jafar, I don't know if I will trust you whatsoever, but I don't know. Okay, so let's see here. The 80s and 90s, the Iran Contra, that could have been Jafar. Now, Hamadi is going to plead with the third candidate, so, you know, Hamadi's getting hit from Jafar, but he doesn't hit Jafar back. He hits this Ayatollah Ibrahim, Razi, and that's, you know, Raisin, Razi, what the fuck. So I'm just going to call this uh, Ayatollah Ibrahim. Ayatollah Ibrahim. He already has Ayatollah in his fucking name, and they're saying that he was basically, he's the clear front runner, the head of the judiciary, and uh, he's, uh, there's like a poll. There was like a fucking poll that was out that he had like 59, you know, fucking percent. It was ridiculous. Basically, they don't have a goddamn chance. 59%. So uh, Abraham Ayatollah 
Um, Abraham Razzie has 59% in this poll, and the number two is Jalili. So Jalili is 8%. So the closest contender to this Ayatollah, this Ayatollah Ibrahim is Jalili, and it's 59% versus 8%. Now, there is some hope. The undecided is 25%. So there's the swing votes right there, the undecideds. 25% have not decided, but if you added 25 plus 8, that's 33. That's still, you know, about half of the support that Ayatollah Ibrahim Raisi has. So this fucking poll, which was conducted May 27th, June 3rd, so about a week ago, they had a, you know, nearly 70,000 samples. So nearly 70,000 people were asked in Iran who they were going to vote for, and this Ayatollah um, this Ayatollah Ibrahim Razi has got 59%, so it's in the bag for him, right? That poll, they, they don't really have a democracy anyways with the fucking supreme leader, and if, uh, you know, goddamn Ayatollah Ibrahim, the Ayatollah Ibrahim, if he is going to already be the, you know, Khomeini's fucking favorite, and the Khomeini is going to go ahead and cheat with for him and cheer for him and put the thumb on the scales for him, then the Ayatollah Ibrahim is going to fucking win. And so we have another Syrian election. Ayatollah Ibrahim's already been anointed. He's already been anointed. Now I asked Sam of Spar and Brawl. This is a YouTube channel. I've noticed a couple times they've got some interesting titles, and they seem like you know pretty even keeled, pretty level headed men who have interesting takes on different things. So. Um, let's see, Hamadi pleaded with the Ayatollah Ibrahim, the clear front runner, to stop using surrogates to threaten him. That's what that was about. So, I asked them, do Iran, uh, Iran's presidents have the power to change anything? Does Iran's presidents have the, so does this election fucking matter? Who gives a goddamn fuck if the supreme leader controls every goddamn thing? What the fuck is the president? Well, the president is actually more like a vice president because it only has a little bit of power here and there. And it actually it has some power, but basically the president can do, you know, like the budget and this and that or treaties or what have you. But if they go too far, then the supreme leader can veto anything and everything that the president does. So the president, essentially, they're like, okay, president, you can run things for a while, and he'll do this and do that, and then go over here, and then they'll say, oh, you know, you went out of bounds, you went too far. And then, so that's essentially, it's, it's more of a vice president because uh, of how he explains it, Sam from Spar and Brawl. He says that the power in the president doesn't lie in the powers that he actually has. It has to do with the secession. So if the king dies, if the queen dies, who becomes king after the Khomeini, right? Khomeini died the first. The original Khomeini died. He was in power for 10 years. The second Khomeini has been in power. Ali Khomeini has been in power for 33 fucking years. So that's a dictatorship. That's a totalitarian dictatorship like a, a totalitarian dictatorship like no other. So that's, uh, you know... Um, Unfortunate, that's uh, unfortunate for Iran that they have this totalitarian. They whittled 600 candidates down to seven. So there, I'm sure there was way more worthy candidates than these seven. That um, So according to Sam of Spar, Spar and Brawl, and I'm going to read his answer, but according to Sam of Spar and Brawl, the power that the president of Iran has is when Khomeini dies or when he's impeached or something happens, then the secession, I think he was elected, I'm not for sure exactly how they elected the Khomeini, right, when the Khomeini goes down, the president is going to be central to the, you know, uh, vision of Iran, the reconstruction of the brand new government, the president is going to be absolutely central in choosing whether he is the fucking leader or doing something else. And so the power of the president is just like the vice president. He has no fucking power unless the president dies. If the president dies, then he has all the power. So hi there. Thanks for your question. This is Sam of Spar and Brawl. And I think it's a great name. You spar with your friends. You brawl with your enemies. When, when you spar with your friends, you get stronger. And that prepares you for life's battles. So Sam of Spar and Brawl, do you believe that Iran's presidents have the power to change anything? Hi there. Thanks for your question. Short answer, largely no. Iran's presidential powers are far more limited than the supreme leaders. The presidential powers are far more limited. And during the last 20 years, the presidents have all become increasingly sidelined. 
domestically. Policies rarely change with presidents, and they are all pretty much promising the same things, and then they fail. But there is some significant difference in competence and the level of corruption of different ones. Foreign policy, no difference really there either, especially with this election. However, if the issue of secession arises, then you, then who you have as president and potential future leader, kingmaker, can have huge effects on domestic and foreign policy. Hope this helps. And full disclosure, it's all my personal analysis. So obviously, a lot of people don't agree with the above analysis. You're the only person that I know is even making any goddamn opinions about this shit. So a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that's actually talking about the um, about Iran. Really, I don't know anybody that ever talked about Iran in any sense in the 40 years I've been on this planet. <laughs> a couple things I got. Anyways, uh, so Iran. So according to him, that the domestically foreign policy, nothing's going to fucking change. The only difference is just slight differences in competence and slight difference in corruption. So who's more corrupt, who's less corrupt, who's more competent, and who's less competent? And essentially, domestically, they're going to get sidelined by the, you know, by the uh, Khomeini. The Khomeini is going to, you know, rule domestically, and the Khomeini is going to rule, um, you know, uh, uh, outside domestic, so foreign, whatever, foreign policy. So the Khomeini, you know, has foreign policy, domestic policy. The Khomeini just fucking runs every goddamn thing. It's a totalitarian motherfucking dictatorship. And so the question now, for me, I had heard that you have, you know, Ibrahim, the Ayatollah Ibrahim Raisi, he's a 60-year-old ultra-conservative. He's headed Iran's judiciary since 2019 after a three-year career in the legal system. So you have Ayatollah Ibrahim, who essentially is the Khomeini's favorite. The Khomeini wants him to win. He's already got 60% of that fucking poll. Only that Jalili or whatever, you know, has got 8%. So this motherfucker's already ran away with it. This isn't a competitive election at all. Here, I'm trying to say that, you know, Iran is a more competitive election than Syria because you got seven candidates, and democracy says that, the, you know, they can go anywhere. But everybody fucking loves, you know, this Ayatollah Ibrahim. The Khomeini loves the Ayatollah Ibrahim. They're all a bunch of right-wing fucking psychos. Remember that they said, too, that, you know, there's five hardliner conservatives, and then there's two centrists, two moderates, which means there's no fucking liberals. There's no socialists. There's nobody on the left, and that's your heartbeat. Your conservative is your brain, right? Your conservative is the brain and the individual, and the liberal socialist is the community. The liberal socialist is the community and the heart, and that means Judging by these presidential candidates, Iran doesn't have any heart, and they don't care about the community. They don't care about the community, and they have no heart. So maybe there's a socialist in there. If there is a socialist, that's the guy that I think that Iran should vote for. Love the fucking whatever, this and that, and do whatever, but ultimately, you got to feed the people. you got to give the people some housing, some universal health care. The candidate that's going to do that kind of stuff, that's the candidate you want to become your president. So you have this uh, Ayatollah Ibrahim, he's vowed to combat poverty and corruption. He's going to construct 4 million new homes in four years. And he's going to build a government of the people for a strong Iran. So, you know, all that sounds good and well and dandy, right? Fight uh, poverty, corruption, constructing new homes, build a government of the people for, is that is that socialist? I don't know if it's socialist, I don't know if it's, it says he's an ultra-conservative. So a 60-year-old ultra-conservative is building 4 million new homes. No Republican in America would ever put up with shit like that. What, build a new house for somebody that didn't get a job and pay for it themselves? Fuck you. Fuck you. You might actually have somebody burn a house down like that. Because what, you're going to give a house to somebody who didn't? Yeah, motherfucker, they're homeless and they need a goddamn home. They're human. They need, how are they supposed to live? How are they supposed to live without a house? So this Ayatollah Ibrahim, he got 38% of the vote in the last presidential election in 2017, four years ago. So it looks very good for, you know, very, very good. And if that's Khomeini's favorite, and Ayatollah Ibrahim, this isn't a fucking democracy. The democracy's a joke anyways, because you got a Khomeini, the Supreme Leader, and the fucking Guardian Council. Get rid of the Khomeini. Get rid of the Guardian Council. That's the biggest impediment to democracy in Iran. So I want the candidate that's going to get rid of the council that chose them, but since they chose them, then that probably will never fucking happen, right? And uh, so I said, you know, it looks like, you know, do you have any favorites? Do you have any favorites? Are you an American? And also, let's see, 
the Iran, I just also repeated what he had said. So you're saying, you know, is Razi the fucking, has he already been anointed? Is there actually going to be a change? And then I, you know, just repeated what he had said about the uh, secession. Essentially, the president has no power. Okay, so, um, thanks for your comments. This is, again, Sam from Spar and Brawl. Sam from Spar and Brawl. Thanks for your comments. Yeah, Supreme Leader in Iran is the Commander-in-Chief, so that's significantly more powerful, the Commander-in-Chief, right? So the Supreme Leader controls all the armed forces, Iran, you know, the uh, uh, Army and the fucking Navy and the all the armed forces, right? Except for the Revolutionary. Isn't that the Guardian Council? I'm not for sure. They're one and the same anyways. But if the Khomeini is eliminated one way or the other, the President, with his personal mandate and position, can take command. Now, some do say that Razi is being appointed. They are saying that this, you know, Ibrahim, this Ayatollah Ibrahim is being appointed or anointed, right? Just being selected, not elected behind closed doors. But then others also say that it's a trap to destroy his political career. So that's interesting. Being president of Iran destroys your political career. I guess it's going to force you to, you know, bump up against the supreme leader. And a lot of times vice presidents and presidents do have a falling out because, what, I'm just supposed to be your chump-ass bitch the whole fucking time? I'm going to be the president if you die, so I need to be doing some big fucking presidential shit. You're going to just put me, you know, put me in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. So I don't, I don't really see how that's a destroy his political career. That would be the pinnacle of your, your political career to become president. He applied to be president. He wants the fucking job. He's basically already got the thing. And if he's going to be the next fucking Khomeini, he's going to be the next supreme leader is what people are saying. But he's saying, Sam of Sparm Brawl is saying that for now the establishment is backing him. For now the establishment is backing him. Uh, they're not Americans. This is Sam. Uh, not really Sam. But he says, uh, when it comes to, does he have a favorite candidate? He says that in his final coverage of the presidential elections, he'll let me know if any of the seven candidates happen to stand out. And then he also mentioned these two things, which actually does help. Himati is probably the most competent, and Zakani is the worst. Zakani is the worst in terms of corruption, competency, because I kind of like Zakani's demeanor. I like his face. I like how he, he seems like a, a tall man who's kind and gentle. So Zakani, that's sad because superficial, my superficial first impression of a picture of the man, and now he's the worst. And then Himati, that's supposed to be one of the moderate centrists, right? Himati, and he's the most competent. He was the one that I thought had a kind face, but... Uh, for some reason, just wants to be a dick, just wants to be an asshole for whatever fucking... You're, you're a kind fucking man. Why, you know, push to be a fucking asshole? Why push to be a dick? But then, I don't know, maybe being too kind, too nice, and then you got Jafar in the fucking race. Jafar is sitting there, you know, shitting on Himati and what have you, and Himati is the most competent. So there you go. Basically, picking the president of Iran is like picking a vice president for the totalitarian dictator who eventually they're going to have a falling out and they're going to hate later on. So I don't think that would destroy his political career. If anything, right, just do your damnedest, do your best. For four fucking years, you're the vice president. If shit, you know, goes fucking down, if something bad happens, then now the vice president the president, the vice president becomes the president, or in their case, the president becomes the supreme leader. So there you go. You know, it's the supreme leader and the guardian council. It's Ali and the Jets. It's, uh, you know, Alvin and the Chipmunks. So supreme leader and the guardian council. The president could become Alvin and the Chipmunks. So does Iran's presidential election change anything? You know, that secession thing is a big deal when some shit hits the fan. But in general, he's saying, no, not at all. Really, doesn't change domestically, doesn't change this. The only levels of corruption and competence is the only fucking thing you're voting on. And so this is just uh, some information that I got here, and it uh, says this is the powers that the president of Iran has. So they got some power, okay? The president of Iran functions as the executive of the decrees and wishes of the supreme leader including signing treaties with foreign countries and international organizations and administering national planning, the budget, state employment affairs. The president also appoints the ministers subject to the approval of parliament and the supreme leader who can dismiss or reinstate any of the ministers and uh, vice 
president at any time, regardless of the president or parliament's decision. So there you go. The president gets to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. So I feel like there's a kind of a sense of he's the head of government. He's the head of mechanizations, new laws, legislations, this and that, and passing new budgets and hiring people and firing people and shit. The president can go run around, do this, do that. But when the fucking Khomeini says you got to stop, then the president has to stop. So he's got significant power. The president gets to run around, sign whatever fucking treaties he wants with any goddamn country. He gets to do some national planning, which these are that's some power. Treaties with foreign government, right? The nuclear deal and shit. So the president can do nuclear deals with foreign country. He can do planning. But the biggest two, uh, the two, three biggest or whatever is the uh, hiring of jobs. He gets to appoint the ministers and then state employment affairs. So he gets to hire ministers and he also gets to hire a bunch of people in government. And also he gets to control the budget. He's got power of the purse. He's got, you know, money. Money is power. And so that's the power of the purse streams. Money is power. Power is power too, right? So when it comes to who's got the fastest violent state power, that's the Khomeini. He's got all the fastest violent state power. But the president gets to share some of that violent, you know, uh, if he doesn't go up against it, then he gets a share in some of that state power. When it comes to hiring and firing, when it comes to signing treaties, when it comes to the budget, right, the president can, uh, the budget, that's the money, he can say where the money of Iran goes. The president of Iran can hire and fire the ministers and this person and that person, and it's subject to the approval of parliament. So I think it'd be hard-pressed for the supreme leader to fire somebody that the president appointed and then got the approval of parliament. So much fucking labor, so much fucking work. You went through all that shit, and then some asshole in the fucking Oz, the Wizard of Oz, that motherfucker just pulled the plug on the whole goddamn thing. If the president appoints him and then the parliament approves him, I think it would be hard for the supreme leader to say, you know, they can't let that motherfucker do that job at that point in time. Now they can, you know, dismiss and reinstate so they can hire and fire. The Supreme Leader can basically veto all the president, all the legislators, the whole fucking government. But the president isn't without powers. And so is he the head of government? Is he the head of state? I don't know. It just seems like a kind of a dual thing, right? There's two fucking, you got two people in power. The president has some powers when it comes to signing treaties with appointments, budget, money, so the way it looks like to me is, you know, he gets to spend money over here, he gets to hire over there, he gets to sign this treaty, and then when he signs a bad treaty, the Khomeini says no. When he spends money or hires somebody or fires somebody the Khomeini don't like, then he intervenes. So it's kind of like the queen maybe, the prime minister and the queen a little bit. The Khomeini is more the face of the fucking country and the president gets to run the thing. But he's saying that foreign policy, domestic policy isn't going to change. Only levels of competence for what? For what ends? For what vision? Level of competence, corruption is going to be all over the fucking place because there is no, only the Khomeini is saying, okay, Iran, save your fucking revolution or whatever, but why not have a democracy, have it actually, you know, rule by the people? You got rid of the goddamn Shaw and the fucking royalist or whatever just so you could have another totalitarian dictatorship? No, you need a country of, by, and for the people. So... Yeah, I can't really tell if Iran is hawkish or dove-like right now, too. So they're saying the foreign policy is not going to change. Well, what is Iran? Are they hawkish? Are they dove-like? I can't really tell. They're sending that, you know, getting Venezuela some gasoline. But at this point, that's just common sense. That's just a humanitarian mission. They didn't do shit with the murder of Soleimani. But what could they do? I mean, I guess they rained missiles down on a military base after they had warned hours beforehand of what they would do. So a fireworks show, right? So they have to go through the humiliation. The general got fucking assassinated, got killed right there in front of the entire world. And then they did a fireworks show. So the Khomeini is the commander-in-chief. He's got a fatwa on the fucking nuclear development, too. But the, the Khomeini is the commander-in-chief. He controls all the armed forces, nuclear, navy, air force, army, all of it. He controls all of it. And so the president actually has very little fascist state power. I mean, he might have some ministers or police. But I would say, actually, the police, there's, like, ministers. The Khomeini, right, you got your head ministers, you got your top guys, but then there's, like, 2,000 of the Khomeini's people that's, like, all throughout the fucking government, and they make decisions based on the Khomeini. And so Khomeini, the Guardian Council, and then you got them 2,000 whatever Khomeini's men, right, 2,000 Khomeini men that's all over the fucking place. So the Khomeini, he's the fucking commander-in-chief. 
He also chooses the ministries of defense. So he's hiring and firing the military, the intelligence, right, the CIA and the defense and the foreign affairs and the interiors, that State Department. He's choosing the ministries of a lot of important ministries, big important ministries in the science ministry. Iran's regional policy is directly controlled by the Office of the Supreme Leader with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs task limited to protocol and ceremonial occasions. All the Iran's ambassadors to Arab countries, for example, are chosen by the Quds Corps, which directly reports to the Supreme Leader. So, so what? So what the fuck am I talking about here? Well, I'm saying that, the, you know, the Khomeini, the fucking Khomeini, the Guardian Council, his 20,000, or his 2,000 fucking goons, the, Kim, Kim, the Khomeini's goons, they, they run the whole fucking show. They run the whole fucking government. The Guardian Council are lawyers, theocratic lawyers. So you got the Khomeini, you got these 12 theocratic lawyers, and then you have 2,000 fucking goons that run Iran. That's your main fucking government. That's your main government. Khomeini... Government council, there's a revolutionary guard, and I don't know, maybe that's the 2,000 goons. Maybe the ministers, so now you got an army, too. you got some military. Okay, he runs the military, too. So you got the 2,000 goons, and then you also got the fucking military. Khomeini runs the whole fucking show. He runs the whole show. But the president, you know, gets to play with the money. He gets to hire and fire some people. He gets to maybe sign a treaty here and there. But ultimately, it's if the Khomeini wants it or not. If the Khomeini doesn't want it, then everything that the president does gets vetoed. So, does the president of Iran have power? I would say largely no, it doesn't. But I would also say it depends on the person. You could get a dynamic, charismatic president in there. And number one rule of power is you're not supposed to outshine the master. But frankly, now that the, you know, the Khomeini has already picked these seven guys, I want, you know, these seven guys to be the next Khomeini. I want them to fucking secede. I want them to kick the Khomeini out. So you've got the endorsement of the Khomeini. Can he fucking, I guess he could probably kick you out if you started talking about how you're going to, you know, uh, get some democracy in Iran or some shit. But that's what I want for the people of Iran. I want them to have democracy. I want them to be empowered. The Khomeini, the dictatorship of the Khomeini has got to come down. 33 fucking years of the Khomeini. I mean, protect your revolution and shit, but the people are hungry. The people are starving. The U U.S. sanctions isn't helping, so that's my government trying to starve the people of Iran so they'll overthrow their fucking, you know, government. But um, it hasn't happened. And actually, Iran is doing a lot of good shit. Iran is on the right side of Palestine. Iran is on the right side of Yemen. And Iran is on the right side of Venezuela. There's a goddamn genocide happening in fucking Yemen right now. So there you go, the Khomeini, he's got all the fucking power, the president gets to play with some of the money, gets to hire and fire some people, gets to sign a treaty or two. Now, I'm going to do the next one where I actually, you know, kind of go down all seven candidates and sort of give a little description of them, but the first thing I notice is there's no leftists. In Peru, they might have elected the Peru president, it looks very good that they elected him. Um, 100% of the fucking things in, so we got, I guess, I don't know what the fuck Peru's problem is, why they're fucking, you know, dragging their feet on this shit, because they're trying to steal from them, right? So that's how Peru gets rid of their leftists, but how Iran gets rid of their leftists, they don't even let the leftists fucking show up. So you got two moderate centrists, two moderate centrists, and five right-wingers. No leftists, no socialists. And if I'm an Iranian, I mean, I want to vote for a socialist. If I, if I was born in Iran and I'm, you know, I want to vote for the socialist. So who's, who's going to give me, you know, more housing and more, you know, universal health care and more fucking jobs and shit? Who's going to help the working class families of Iran? That's who I would vote for if I was an Iranian citizen.